Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon, family. It's 1.01 p.m. on February 1st, 2020. This is a Tuesday afternoon here in sunny Ocala, Florida. So it's 1.01 p.m. February 4th, 2020 on a Tuesday afternoon. And this is the Word for the Day, Part 2, for January 30th, 2020. Once again, this is the Word for the Day, Part 2. January 30th, 2020. Let's go right into the Word of God today. And now, on January 29, 2020, at 7.17 7, 7 p.m. evening, during my worship eating session, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is our only hope. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is our only hope. This is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 19, Psalm 42, verse 11. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15, and 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1, Romans chapter 5 verse 5, and finally Psalms chapter 33 verse 22. So let's go into the Word of God today, New King James Version Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If in, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. Psalm 42, verse 11. 42nd Psalm, verse 11. Why are you cast down on my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for yet I shall praise Him, the help of my countenance and my God. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 27. Colossians 1 and 27. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. Ephesians 4 and 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. First Peter 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter 3 and 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. Isaiah 61 and 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me, to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans 5, verse 5. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, and hope. That's verses 3 and 4. Here's 5 and 5. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The 33rd Psalm, verse 22. Psalm 33, verse 22. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. Okay, the next entry in my journal during worship evening is 7.18 p.m., July 29, 2020. Jesus knew their thoughts and said, Why are you trying to trick me? Show me the coin for paying the tax. Jesus knew their thoughts and said, Why are you trying to trick me? Show me the coin for paying the tax. This is found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 16 through 22, key verses 18 through 19. So let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 22, Verses 16 through 22. And they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true, and teach the way of God in truth. Nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what do you, you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. So they brought him to Denarius. And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. 
He said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. The next entry in my journal during worship meeting, 7.19 p.m. on January 29, 2020. Whose name and inscription is on it? They answered, Caesar's. If it is Caesar's, give it to him. If it is God's, give it to him. They were amazed at his reply. Whose name and inscription is on it? They answered, Caesar's. If it is Caesar's, give it to him. If it is God's, give it to him. They were amazed at his reply. This is also found in the same scripture verse. Verse says, Matthew chapter 22, verses 16 through 22. Key verses 20, 20 through 22. So let's go back to Matthew again. Chapter 22, verses 16 through 22. The Pharisees. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Then the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent him to the disciples with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God and truth, nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay, to see, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived the wickedness and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore the, the Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and the God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Okay, folks and family, the Spotify song I have for you this time around is Calm the Storm Live. That's Calm the Storm Live by this group, Union Creative. So I'll post a link to that in the description box below. Also, this YouTube link as well. I'll post that as well in the description box below. The next entry in my journal is 7.22 p.m., January 29, 2020. Drop in a line and catch the first fish you find. In its mouth is a coin to pay the taxes for both of us. Go and do so. It says Jesus speaking. Drop in a line and catch the first fish you find. In its mouth is a coin to pay the taxes for both of us. Go and do so. Jesus. So this is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 24 through 27. Key verse 27. So let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 24 through 27. Peter and his master paid their taxes. When they had come to Capernaum, when they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, Did your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, Yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him, saying, What do you think, Simon? From who do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? From their sons or from the strangers? Peter said, From strangers. Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in the hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Okay, the next entry in my journal during worship evening service is 7.23 p.m., January 29, 2020. The widow dropped in two mites, and she gave more than all the others because it was all she had. The widow dropped in two mites. She gave more than all the others because it was all she had. This is found in the book of Mark, chapter 12. Verses 41 through 44, key verses 42 through 44. Also found in the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, key verses 2 through 4. So let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. The widow's two mites. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites which made a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, I should I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who given to the treasury, for they put in all out of their abundance, but out of her poverty put in all that she had, her livelihood. Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Luke 21, verses 1 through 4. The widow's two mites. And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, Truly I say to you all, say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all, for all these out of their abundance have put in offerings for God, but she out of her poverty put in the livelihood that she had. 
Okay, folks and family, the last journal entry during the worship music is at 7.24 p.m., January 29th, 2020. And this is the temple tax, the half shekel. So this is also called the temple tax, the half shekel. Okay, this it's found in Exodus, Exodus chapter 30, verses 11 through 16. Second Kings chapter 12, verses 4 through 16. Nehemiah chapter 10, verses 32 through 33. And Matthew chapter 17, verses 24 through 27. Also, during the building of this third temple, which I've heard it's already been built, they're going to bring back the half shekel temple tax. So keep that in mind. You can go into Google search and look it up. There's also a special coin that was minted that's got the head of Cyrus and the head of Trump on there on, the, on this half shekel, half shekel uh, coin. Okay, so let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 30, verses 11 through 16. Exodus 30, 11 through 16. The ransom money. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When you take the sense of the children of Israel for their number, then every man shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord when you number them, but there may be no plague among them when you number them. This is what everyone among who are numbered shall give. Half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty giras. The half shekel shall be an offering to the Lord. Everyone included among those who are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering to the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. When you give an offering to the Lord, to make atonement for yourselves. And you shall take the atonement money of the children of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of meeting, that it may be a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord, to make atonement for yourselves. Second Kings, chapter 12, verses 4 through 16. Second Kings 12, verses 4 through 16. And Jehoshaphat, Jeho Jehoshaphat, Jehosh, said to the priests, All the money of the dedicated gifts that are brought into the house of the Lord, each man sends his money, each man's assessment money, and all the money that a man purposes in how in his heart or bring into the house of the Lord, let the priests take it themselves, each from his constituency, and let them repair the damages of the temple, wherever, they, wherever any dilapidation is found. Now it was so, by the twenty third year of King Jehosh, the priests had not repaired the damages of the temple, so the King Jehosh called Jehoiada the priest and the other priests, and said to them, Why have you not repaired the damages of the temple? Now therefore do now take more money from your constituency, but deliver it for repairing the damages of the temple. And the priests agreed that they would neither receive more money from the people nor repair the damages of the temple. Then Jehoda Jehoiada took the priest took a chair chest Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in its lid, and set it beside the altar, and on the right side as one comes to the house of the Lord, and the priest had kept the door but there all the money brought into the house of the Lord. So it was, whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and put it in bags and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they gave the money which had been appointed, which had been apportioned into the hands of those who did the work, who had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they paid it out to the carpenters and builders who worked on the house of the Lord, and to masons and stone cutters, and for buying timber and hewing stone to repair the damage of the house of the Lord, for an all for the, that was paid out to repair the temple. However, there is not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, trimmers, sprinkling, bowls, trumpets, or any articles of gold or articles of silver for the money brought into the house of the Lord. But they gave that to the workmen, and they repaired the house of the Lord with it. Moreover, they did not require an account for the men into whose hand they delivered the money to be paid to workmen, for they dealt faithfully. Faithfully, the money from the treasure trespass offerings, the money from the trespass offerings, the money from the sin offerings, was not brought to the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priests. Okay, the Spotify song I have for you, Spotify worship song, is Inhabit Live by Leland. The song called Inhabit Live by Leland. I'll post that, the web album link in the description box below. Also, this YouTube link for the song as well. Okay, folks and family, that's the Word for Day Part 2. January 30th, 2020, the Word for Day Part 2. January 30th, 2020, everyone have a great day. Take care of yourselves. God bless you in everything you do. Remember, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Turn from your sins today. Today is your day of salvation, your day of decision making. So turn, turn, turn away from your sins and turn back to the God. And God will save you and he will heal you and make you whole. I thank you very much for your time. God loves you and so do I. Very much. Take care of yourselves this week. And I'll talk to you next video upload. Bye-bye for now. Take care.